Minecraft Warhouse followers. Today we're going to be doing some metal stamping and making this really cute little Pacific Northwest um, wrapped ring. It's even got a little message in the inside. So let's get started. So today we are going to be using um, the bracelet blanks and we're going to be doing the brass one. But we do also have copper and aluminum as well. Um, if the piece you are working with does have this film, just make sure you go ahead and peel it off so you're not having anything extra in the way. All right. So you're just going to want to have some metal shears for this, and we're going to go ahead and um, I already got one that I started. I cut one in, and I'm going to cut the other end. Now that you snip both parts that you need, um, I do have a bigger finger that I'm making um, this wrap ring for, but most of the time you can get about two wrap rings out of this. I do just, and that's what's left over. Um, but it's just really depends on the size of your fingers and which finger you're wanting to put it on. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to use this buffing block. So this, you have two medium size medium side for buffing and then you have two coarse. We're going to go ahead and take that coarse side and along that rough part that we cut we're just going to go ahead and buff it down. Just making it nice and smooth. Um, also it's kind of a preference you can go ahead and also round out the corners while you're doing this. It just really depends on how buffed down and what you want your edges to look like. And you will want to make sure you're flipping your blank, getting both sides nice and smooth so it's not hurting anybody when they're wearing it. I do want to point out, you can see a little bit, but you are going to get a little dirt or dust um, on your hands. And that's going to be normal since you are buffing down metal. You'll just have to wash your hands afterwards. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and kind of slightly buff out the corners. Usually I get those really nice and rounded out. Again, when you're doing the corners, it, it's just a preference on how buffed down you want it to look and what look you are going for. Another thing you can do is you can go ahead and buff these sides. So it's just going to kind of round them out and make them not as um, straight as they are now. So I'm going to do that in the process while I'm buffing down each side. You can see there all the dust. Just buff it nice. I just like the way that these um, edges look when they get buffed down. It kind of gives it that more organic look, um, which I think fits having trees and mountains on the ring. Also, especially with copper and brass, I just think I like kind of that more natural look than that shine and straight edges. Again, when I'm doing the edges, I am flipping it both sides. I'm going to get both edges. I 
probably do this a little bit more than I am in this video, but um, for video's sake and not having to watch me buff this forever, um, I'm just going to kind of quickly touch it. Another fun thing to do is we're going to show you how to give the edges some hammer tone look. So again, just making it a little bit more natural and okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab that multifunctional hammer. Let's see. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So here's that multifunctional hammer. And we're going to go ahead and use this guy in hammering, uh, taking that ball pin and hammering along the edges of this blank. Let's go. So again, I'm just kind of going along that edge, hammering all the way up, and I'll go around and down. Making sure I get my ends as well. One thing about taking the ball pin and making this hammer tone look on the sides is we do have some bigger stamps we're going to use today. So if they kind of go off, um, off your blank, it's really going to just look natural and it's just going to blend right into the hammer tone spots versus abruptly seeing it go off your metal stamping piece. bring up a close-up so you can kind of see those edges see how they're all hammer toned and then this is what it would look like without being hammer toned so it's much more natural again you're gonna to want to make sure you're doing this side so another thing you can do to make this not quite as shiny is you can take that buffing block again and we're gonna use that medium size I'm going to try to also make sure I give you guys a close-up of this. So we're just going to go on that flat surface. And we're going to definitely go on both sides. Let's see if you can tell on that camera. I don't know if you can tell, but this end is going to be shinier, and that's going to be a little bit more matte. I think having the trees and mountains with a matte background just is really eye a lot more eye-catching, and it doesn't take away from the detail in these stamps. Especially with the hammer tone edges and having that matte. It's just really, really, really pretty. Okie dokie. Just a little bit more here. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and stamp on what I want to be the inside of my ring. Today I am going to be using the Stargazer font. Um, this is a small 2 millimeter font. And then we are also going to be using these fun stamps. You can see the little trees on this guy. You're going to have one 4 millimeter stamp, two 6 millimeter, and one 9.5 millimeter. And they're all different trees, which is really fun. Really fun to mix. Then we're going to be using the mountains. So you got your main 
mountain stamp and then your caps on these. So I did already write on this what I'm wanting to say, but I wanted to show off these um, stamping guides because you can tell right here there is a blue line and then there's two little hash marks underneath it. So for the bracelet blank we're using today, that smaller one, if you line up that bottom line with the bottom of edge of your stamping blank, so like here, you're going to get a more centered stamp with whatever words you're writing. And then these other two are for your bigger stamping bracelets. So we're going to go ahead and line this guy up in the center. And I'm going to do two words. I'm going to do one above and one below. So I'm actually going to line that blue line up right down the center of this blank. Now if you have a hard time with your stamping blank staying in place while you stamp, you can go ahead and just take the um, straight tape, then press our straight tape and just tape an edge down if you don't feel comfortable with just one. You can go ahead and take another piece and just plop it right on the other side. It's nice because it's really easy just to rip off of there. Okay. I'm going to start with that F for feet planted. I want to show you something about their stamps though, which is really nice if you're new, especially if you're new to stamping. Um, this F on here is going to be engraved on, you're going to have an engraving on any letter or stamp that you have in your set. Um, just make sure that is facing you and then you're going to go ahead and just slide it down and then it's going to catch on that stamping guide. I don't know if you guys can see but it gets caught and that's going to be where I stamp. Now if you now if you have um, a hard time getting a clean impression on your stamps, I would suggest taking the alphabet or letter set you have and just stamping out on one of these bracelet blanks. Um, you'll know how much force you need in your hammering and then it'll also just help you feel more comfortable with the set that you do have. Um, if you are doing a copper or a brass, just know that it is a harder metal to stamp versus aluminum, so you might have to give a little bit more oomph to your hammer. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take that blue line again to help guide me and set me where I need, and I'm going to line it up with the bottom of this bracelet blank. Just got to get nice and centered. Okay, gonna start with that P again, that engraved letter is facing me, and I'm going down with every letter and getting it caught and catching it on that stamping guide. He's popping up on me. I might have to tape him down. So again, engraved letter facing me. Just letting it catch on that stamping guide. I'm going to have to tape him down so he keeps popping up. Coming down with that end. Catching it on that stamping guide and giving it one good hammer. I will show you on the other little quote we write what to do if you have any letters that you're needing to swoop down below. Because, you know, those Y's, or if you have a P that needs to go lower, or G. Okay. 
Now I got my feet planted there, and I'm going to go ahead and put some trees around this too while I'm over here. Um, I think I'm going to take this fun one right here. Again, the tree is going to be facing me. I'm just going to line it up where I want it. Um, since these guys do have a lot of detail, I'm going to do the tilt and tap method. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to hammer in the center, and then you're going to kind of rotate it. Go back and forth, side to side, and you're just going to be tapping while you do that. So here we go. And I got a nice little tree impression there. I'm going to do a tree on the other side. Oh, I'll show you guys this one too. He's kind of cute. He's got kind of bushy. A little wider than that last one we put on. So I got him where I want him. Hold the stamp nice and firm and win and then tilt and tap. I'm going to do a couple little ones, I believe, by these as well. So this is a nice little 4 millimeter one. I'm going to put them on the ends. Okay. All right. Now we're going to flip it over. When you are flipping this over, you want to make sure that you keep the word fonts, your words the same way as the words you stamp in the front. So you're not having them go different directions. All right. Again, I already have my words on here. I wrote them out earlier. So I'm going to do on the top part, ready for, and then the bottom part is going to say the climb. So we're going to take that R, make sure that engraved letter is facing you. Oh, actually, I'm not quite centered. I'm going to redo that real quick. Okay, that's a little better. So I'm going to take that R, make sure the engraved letter is facing me, and come down and catch on that stamping guide. So we're going to have a Y at the end of this that I'm going to show you how to get it go lower than the rest of your words, or your letters, sorry. Okay. So you're going to want to take that Y, make sure again that engraving is facing you, and you're going to catch, okay? And then you're just going to slightly pick it up and go over your stamp. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. Okay, so you're going to go and you're going to catch, and then you're going to go over just a tad. So catch and go over. So then he'll be lower than the rest of my letters. that last little set of words. I'm going to line that blue line up with the bottom of my stamping blank. I'm probably going to go ahead and tape down this side just so it's not moving down around on me. Okay, let's get that T. Again, engraving facing me. And catching on that stamping guide. One thing that could be happening if you're stamping and only having parts of your letters showing up, you might not be holding it firm and in the center or hitting in the center of your stamp.
one thing with these signature lines that I'm using today is um, they are meant for the heavier metals, so it does make it a little bit easier to get those impressions. I don't have to quite hit as hard. So that is another thing to consider if you have one of those signature lines um, and you haven't played with them before, go ahead and stamp them out on some of your metal blanks, making sure you're using the right amount of um, force you need for the hammer. All right, ready for the climb. And if you haven't guessed, we're gonna go ahead and throw some mountains on the other side. So when it's wrapped around your finger, you're gonna see ready for the climb and then those mountain scenes. So first, you're gonna take that main mountain. I'm gonna make sure I have a little bit of room for my snow cap, and I'm gonna make sure that is facing me. It is a bigger stamp, so it might slightly go off the edge. And I am gonna do that tilt and tap again. So, one in the middle and then tilting it back and forth. So you get a nice good impression. If you don't get a good impression, if you are able to, you can line it up. Sometimes it's a little tricky though. Okay. Now for your caps. One thing to remember is whichever way this is facing, it's going to be facing you this way. So you're going to have your cap going off on the other side. Just one thing to consider so you're not stamping the wrong snow cap on the wrong side of the mountain. Okay, I'm going to line this up and do that tilt and tap again. That is looking so good. Okay, going to grab the other snow caps. Nice thing is, you can just build off and make a beautiful mountain range with these stamps. Okay. I might actually put a little tree over here. I'm going to take this big guy, the bigger um, 9.5 millimeter tree. So it is going to kind of fall off the stamping blink a little bit, but that's okay. I like how it looks. It's either, you can either have it so it falls off and you don't see the trunk, or like it's so tall you can't see the top. I'm going to use this little guy over here. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill my impressions in. I'm going to start with this planted feet side. You're going to take that enamel marker and just go over all those letters and those design stamps, making sure they're nice and filled in. I'm going to let it dry a little bit, and you can just have a paper towel or napkin to clean it off. And first, we're going to dab it, and then we'll wipe it off. I've noticed when I dab it and then wipe it off, um, my ink stays in my letters a little bit better. And when I have more detailed stamps, I like to let the ink set a little bit longer. That may just be a preference, but okay, just patting it dry and then we're going to wipe it off. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice and clean. All right, coloring this in now with that enamel marker. Getting all those letters, getting those trees, and now these mountain caps all filled in. One thing I like about the mat buffing with the um, mat block is anything that has any marks or anything like that, it just really blends in with the mat look, especially when you hammer tone. Um, the sides. 
Okay, again, just letting it dry a little bit, and then I'm going to do that padding me method. I'm going to pat it dry and then wipe it away. You just tend to get things a little bit cleaner. Okay. Again, pat and wipe away. Look at those mountains. Gonna flip it around so you can see. Now we're gonna take the now we're taking the ring bender. I don't know if you guys can see how nicely arched that is. I'm gonna want this to be right in my center. So I want my ring to come up this way and that be in the inside, so I'm making sure it's sitting on that rounded part. And then once it's in there, I'm just, oops. I'm just gonna go ahead and squeeze. I'm gonna go this way and squeeze and squeeze. So right now it's looking looking like that, but sometimes you gotta just work with it. So I'm gonna bend that there. And then one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this nice and firm and I'm gonna slightly bend the end out and we're gonna bend the other side out. So that when they're fully bended, they're not going to hit each other. And they're going to do that wrap. So I'm just going to keep going around with this bending bar. All the way to the top. And I'm going to do the other side. All the way to the top. Oops. I'm gonna do it to the side, all the way to the top. Okay, make sure I get those ends nice and good. Now, if you want it to be separated a little bit more, you just gotta. You're gonna have to. Pull it apart yourself. I like holding it with the pliers. It gives it a little bit more leverage. So bending those ends out a tad more. Okay. And there you have it. Nice little wrap ring. Now, if it's too big or loose for you, that's another thing. You can just go ahead and hold it and kind of squeeze it together. Make it a little bit more tight. This ring is perfect size for me, but if I needed to, I could make it a little more tight. Also, you don't have to have it that separated. You can go ahead and push them a little closer. And then you have that feet planted as a little surprise for yourself. Just a nice, simple metal wrapped ring. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you loved working with these stamps just as much as I did. Mm -hmm.